Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. If he then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins. True repentance amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ is risen from the dead, and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. taken refuge, let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness, incline your ear to me, make haste to deliver me, be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. 
Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the book of Acts. Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Here ends the reading. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, The same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient. 
whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Here ends the reading. Jesus said to the disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Here endeth the reading. This pandemic made all of us cancel things we'd been looking forward to for ages. Church celebrations, vacations, plans with friends. But look on the bright side. 
Life has always been full of disappointments. Seriously, though, while in our darker moments we can easily dwell on what's wrong and what might have been, we can get through those moments much faster and come through them much stronger when we remember that we have great freedom to choose how we respond to life's inevitable problems. And we may think we have problems, but consider the example of St. Stephen. He's introduced in Acts chapter 6, very early in the church's history, when the church was still a small group of Jewish Christians led by the twelve apostles in Jerusalem. And already the church had internal conflict. Greek speakers complained that their widows were receiving less generous support than those of the Aramaic speakers. The twelve decided to resolve the conflict by ordaining seven men as the first deacons who would be responsible for distributing support fairly. Most sensible people would prefer not to be shoved into the middle of a family dispute and given responsibility for solving it. But not only did Stephen accept the challenge, he excelled. Quickly, he earned a reputation as an eloquent miracle worker, and his story takes on parallels to that of Jesus himself. Unfortunately, they were parallels to his passion and death. Stephen's excellence attracted new followers to the church, but also attracted the attention of the authorities. Apparently, they felt jealous or threatened, maybe both, because they conspired to frame him for a crime and tried to stir up the public against him. Most of chapter 7 is Stephen's thoughtful and provocative speech during his trial, which brings us to the verses of our first reading. If Stephen's speech was primarily to defend himself, he would have been sorely disappointed, because his speech only enraged them further and led directly to his stoning. But if he was disappointed, that feeling could only have lasted until he received a heavenly vision and echoed Jesus' commendation of his spirit and forgiveness of his killers. Because of his faithfulness, Stephen's disappointment was turned to satisfaction, love, and joy. Without the witness of the church, especially the words and examples of the saints, we could easily lapse into a cynical reading of the gospel, particularly the portion we just heard. When Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, we could easily say, there is so much to trouble our hearts, stop the troubles of the world. But God never forces anyone to do the right thing, no matter how disappointed God might be in our choices. When Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me, we could easily say, how could loving God reject anyone? But Jesus was talking about the access to heaven he was about to open by his death and rejection. He wasn't talking about laying out criteria for admission. He wasn't talking about rejecting anyone. Remember, Jesus is the way, not the obstacle. When Jesus says, if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. We could easily say, all right, I'll have a million dollars, Jesus. Oh, and a roll of toilet paper. But that would show how profoundly we had failed to follow Jesus' teaching, to scorn earthly things which are passing away, and love heavenly things which endure. So when Jesus says, we will do greater things than these, it's important to read that with the right frame of mind. Yes, some of the saints are said to have been miracle workers, but few Christians seriously believe that we will do great wonders. One of my colleagues pointed out that since ancient times, when most people have thought of wonders, we think of great buildings. Can you name the seven wonders of the ancient world? I'll give you a hint. Six of them are no longer standing, and the pyramids have been ravaged by people seeking good stone. Like most people, I do love great buildings, but think about it. Which has made a more enduring impression on you? Seeing monumental buildings or experiencing acts of kindness? 
Is not kindness, then, a great wonder? Most of the seven wonders of the ancient world existed for only a fraction of history, but the kindnesses we have given and received can never be undone. So we are wise to invest in our souls, which are more enduring than the so-called wonders, and which can be more consequential. Here's another pop quiz. How many people who lived during the first century AD can you name? Now, how many of them are saints? Most, I would guess. Maybe you can name a couple of Roman emperors. But how many peasants can you name who are not saints? That tells you something. Perhaps you could think of a couple of bad guys, like Herod and Pilate. But even then, if they hadn't been part of the story of Jesus, do you think you ever would have heard of them? How many other Roman governors and client kings can you name? Notability is a poor proxy for sanctity, but I still hope I've made my point. The literal stones of the ancient world have largely crumbled, but the names, words, and deeds of the saints endure, undiminished by time. So they are greater things indeed. And most of the deeds of the saints were not miracles. The church called Stephen to feed widows. Jesus called Peter to feed his sheep. Most Christians won't be singled out like that, but all of us can choose to live the holiest life we can. The consequences of our good works are not limited to our legacies and the people we have helped. Although physical buildings require costly maintenance, our living stones pay something of a dividend. While the elites of the ancient world sometimes felt threatened by the popularity of the church, the church became popular and grew when ordinary people saw the works of mercy that Christians were doing and wanted to join us. When plagues hit and most Romans, who could, fled to their villas, people noticed that the Christians stayed to care for the sick. And so long before Christians could build physical churches, the living stones were building up the body of Christ. Today, fewer and fewer people know anything about Christianity, and more and more have ugly misconceptions. But the same principle holds true. The Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City just made national news for offering to host a field hospital within its impressive stone edifice, though it turns out the extra beds were not needed, thanks be to God. We may not have the resources of a cathedral, but St. John's is collecting money to share with our friends in Navajo land, and I've already been impressed with the response. And as individuals, whatever gifts we might have, we do better for ourselves for the church and for the world when we use our gifts to glorify God and serve the suffering in Jesus' name. Rather than look around us and see cancellations, we can choose to look for opportunities to follow Jesus ever more closely, opportunities to live and grow in our faith. When we take advantage of those opportunities, we find our disappointment has swiftly been replaced with the joy and satisfaction of a clearer vision of the love of God. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know thy Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leadeth to eternal life. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. O God, the King Eternal, who dividest the day from the night and turnest the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep thy law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done thy will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This time I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thy inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God, whose power, working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the Church, and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever.
Oh, <laughs> 